There is a period, especially in the Western world, that textiles have been associated with domestic activities, with women, and with the production of decorative goods. So there is a lot of knowledge there, but this knowledge is just underestimated because it only belongs to a certain group of people, which has been basically women. Technology itself, as a definition in 18th, 19th century, actually was invented as a masculine field. And therefore, in the very definition of technology is political. I'm an artist and through material research I'm interested in discovering and revealing and showing the blind spots in society. In my project, the Museum of Lost Technology, I'm looking for technologies, techniques and information that could have been invented but was not because certain practices were separated from each other and were segregated, isolated in their own worlds. So I'm combining handcrafts with different scientific fields. The studio I work in is the most important part of my research and the studio is re-equipped and furnished every year together with a scientist from a different field. This year I'm working with a physicist what I'm doing here actually is first of all opening up possibilities for the string and for textiles to bring them to environments that they have not really been like biotechnology or physics lab situation or a zero gravity flight and I'm testing these environments with my handcrafting skills. On the zero gravity flight I will be trying to create a net in zero gravity environment. Obviously the ways we work on on Earth under the force of gravity has a certain limit and the zero gravity environment has its own limits, its own possibilities in a way. So I will be trying to learn a craft from scratch or discover a craft from scratch. How would you create a netted structure in zero gravity? In this way I can show that our imagination for the future is also limited. So we need to open our minds to different possibilities and a more inclusive research culture and that's what I'm trying to point at. There is this home used knitting machine in my studio which I brought from Turkey from my parents home. This knitted machine fascinated me so much. And every time I see that machine in my studio, I still think of those times, actually. In the 1980s, the resources in Turkey were very scarce. So it was a time where we had really less to play with. So I remember being a very resourceful child. I remember making things, making dresses, making boxes, making houses, making my toys. I very much like going to flea markets and second-hand stores. Um, on one hand, I find materials that are useful for my project, but also I see that those are the places where actually objects from different fields really mix. So that I find very inspiring. It's one of the reasons I like it. It's just like my lab. I don't know if this is about the type of work I do or is it about my personality, but I have a difficulty to separate private and work lives. I've worked really hard on it. I tried so much to create separations for myself because I thought, well, that's how it needs to be done. But now I gave up. Um, I live like this. With my textiles experiments, I'm actually trying to create an example. What I would really love to happen would be that the rule makers, the decision makers, see that there are more potential in different fields other than we invest in today.